Archie, I've got money left over in your 529 account. What can I do with it? Rob, let me educate you. I'm Archie Hoxton. And I'm Rob Hoxton. And this is Last Paycheck, weekly wisdom to help you retire and stay that way. Welcome back to Last Paycheck. We're your hosts, Archie Hoxton and Rob Hoxton. And today we've got an interesting topic for you. We're talking about a provision in some recent laws that were passed called the Secure Act 2.0 that overhauled, uh, you know, the American retirement legal and tax background. And uh, this is a really special provision that they threw in there that many of us in our world were very doubtful that it would make it through, but it did. Yeah, it's exciting for uh, those of us who are sort of nerdly financial planners for sure. Right, right. And it may be exciting for you too once you hear about it. So, um, so the topic specifically is the ability to roll over unused funds in a 529 plan to a Roth IRA. Now, there are a lot of rules and special context that you need to know about this. That's what we're going to cover today. Maybe, maybe I can kind of set the stage with uh, like a scenario. Yeah. Uh, so, so let's say you're. Um, You've got you're in a, you've you've got kids that have finished their educations. Um, when they were born, you started saving for their educations, and 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 you were using uh, five twenty nine education accounts. Um, and you were diligent about saving. Maybe the maybe your 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 kids didn't need all of the money, so now they're finished with school, but you still have a balance left in that account. What do you do with the balance? Yeah, and the old, the old options were, well, pick a new beneficiary and pay for their school. Uh, maybe a grandchild or a niece or nephew or something like that. You could also eat the cost and pay the penalty in the taxes. And just take the money out. And just take the money out. Yeah. Um, but there weren't, truthfully, there really weren't many options. So sometimes that money may just kind of sit in the account uh, until you figure out something to do with it, especially if you get a little bit of analysis paralysis about the tax and penalties. So this new law is what kind of answers that question, what to do with these funds. And, And just so we can add a little color to the conversation and some background, for those of you who maybe aren't familiar, a 529 account is a, is an account that's designed to incentivize uh, education savings. So saving for private school or most most commonly for college, where you can contribute to this account. Uh, the earnings grow tax free. You may even if uh, if you live in the right state and you use that state's five twenty nine plan, you may even get a state tax deduction. Um, and then if you use the funds on qualified education expenses, right, tuition, room and board, books, potentially off-campus housing and food, if you use it for that, you, you get to withdraw the earnings and the contributions tax-free. Right, and it, it can be for college, it can be for um, secondary school, it can be for uh, trade school. Right. Uh, and it can be for any accredited institution, even abroad. So if you were going to sp- maybe go to the Sorbonne in France, you can use those funds without penalty uh, for, that, for those education costs as well. Right. And the definition of qualified ed- education cost is fairly broad. You know, you can, up to certain limits, you can assist with paying off student loan. The, we won't get into that, but those, there are limits to that. Um, you know, you may, be able to be, you may be able to be reimbursed for, you know, scholarship funds that were used to assist the, the child with education. Um, but that, that's a, the, the sort of the broad picture. Uh, the beauty of this is that you can roll this potentially into a Roth IRA, which we've talked about before, but that's a retirement account. Maybe touch on what, what, what we like about Roths too. So since we're being sort of uh, elementary, not to use an educational term, but yeah. <laughs> since we're being elementary, let's talk about what a Roth is So uh, for listeners. Yeah, so a Roth IRA is a, it's a retirement account, right? So you take after-tax money, you contribute up to a, a limit per year 
For most people, it's 6,500. If you're over the age of 50, it's 7,500. That's for this year. It, it will likely change in 2024. Um, and so you can make these contributions. And the beauty of it is that once you make the contribution, you can invest it, you can let it grow. When you withdraw it, it is, as long as you follow all the rules, it's tax-free completely, earnings and contributions. Um, and you can spend it on anything, right? Now, there are rules, right? The, you have to have the Roth IRA for at least five years. You can't withdraw it before age 59 and a half without you know, a 10% penalty. Um, but after that, once you've met those requirements, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful account. And so it doesn't have that limitation of what you can spend it on like the 529 does. So, so let's dive into the, this new provision in the SECURE Act. So they have, the government, and this is where we were surprised because this is a pretty sweet deal. The government decided that it is worthwhile to allow people to repurpose those those funds from the 529 and roll them into a Roth IRA. But there are, there are some catches. So first of all, this starts next year. It's not, if, you're, if you want to try and squeeze it in before year end, yeah. don't, it's not. 20, 2024 and later. 2024 and later. The five, the, one of the key rules is that the 529 has to be open for 15 years. And the Roth IRA has to be opened in the name of the beneficiary of the 529. So with a 529, you've got two parties, right? You've got the custodian, who's the adult usually that established the account for a beneficiary, who typically is the child. Right. So they're called a beneficiary. The adult is the custodian. There's one custodian. There's usually a contingent custodian in case something happens to the original custodian. And uh, I love it when they use the word custodian, because I always think of like cleaning things up, but mm -hmm. it's actually about who has custody of the funds. And, um, and so, as you said, this can benefit the beneficiary. Right. So just to give an example, and kind of go back to your example, let's say you had funds saved in a 529, your child went to school, you spent some of the 529 funds, uh, but not all of them. Maybe they went to you know, an in-state school or they went to a trade school and they, they just didn't have the use of all of those Or funds. like you, you went and most of your grad school was paid for. Right. Um, you didn't have, we didn't have to hit your 529 account very hard for your education. Right. And so with that, there's the opportunity, that the, the question arises, right? What do I do with the remaining funds? Uh, well, you could open a Roth IRA for that child, right? At that point, most likely, in most cases, they have earned income, which is a requirement for- And they're probably an adult at this point. Probably an adult. Could they open the, the Roth IRA? Yep, they could open it. Mm -hmm. It has to be in the name of the beneficiary of the 529. And so what you can do is you can contribute up to the annual maximum for a Roth IRA, 6,500. You can roll that into the Roth IRA for that child. And, but the catch is there's a lifetime maximum of 35,000. So that's the total and it's limited to 6,500 per year. So if you have enough, you could in theory do the max every year. It would take four or five years and then You'll have hit it, and you will have given your child a leg up on retirement. So what's cool about it is you, when you funded the 529 originally, you probably got at least some tax deduction. I know here in West Virginia, we, um, if we use the state program, which is called the West Virginia Smart 529, uh, we got an, a West Virginia income tax deduction, which was worth, at the time, a 6% uh, income tax deduction. So. So this money, there was a tax deduction, there's a tax-free rollover to this Roth IRA, and then after that, no taxes, Right, uh, which is sweet. That money would, in theory, maybe not be taxed again until, you know, maybe the, the heir of your 
529 beneficiary inherited it, pulled it out, and invested it into a taxable account. I mean, it's it, it yeah. could be it it goes without taxation for a long time, which is what part of what's so surprising about this law in the first place that there is a provision for this. It's really yeah. So there's a little, there's a potential for a little money party here, but Uncle Sam doesn't want it to be so great. So they've limited, like you said a minute ago, the amount that you can ultimately roll over from a 529 to a Roth IRA. Yeah. Now I know that that as the custodian of a 529, I can change that beneficiary. Right. And I know that there are people listening who are on the same page with me here, right? Right. So I'm the custodian of a 529 account. I can change the beneficiary anytime I want. So I can change the beneficiary from my adult child who didn't use it to a grandchild or another sibling or anybody I want. Mm -hmm. In theory, maybe even me, I'm not positive. Why, why wouldn't I change the, the beneficiary on a 529 where I'm the custodian to myself or my spouse and then put that money in my own Roth IRA? That's a good question. And probably, like you said, a lot of people are probably asking that question. Something that sometimes happens, and this is really, the SECURE Act is notorious for this, there are questions left open. Uh, there are things that are unanswered. We all remember it. Many of us remember it with inherited IRAs. It was very unclear, you know, the 10-year rule. We'll, we'll probably do an episode on that eventually. It's beyond the scope of today. but. Uh, this is one of these cases where it's not clear whether you can do that, right? Because remember, one of the important requirements to be able to do this is you ha the, the account has to be open for 15 years. It is unclear whether that 15-year period ch resets when you change the beneficiary. Oh, uh, yeah. So we don't know if... You know, if you change it to yourself, now do you have to wait 15 years before you can do the rollovers? We don't know. Some people may decide, I mean, it's the law is, I'm, I'm going to take it by the letter and I'm going to be aggressive about it. I'm going to interpret it my way. The IRS may not end up interpreting it that way and they may decide to penalize people who did. We don't really know. It's possible. So this is where one of these areas where you've got to be yeah, so if they were to to go hard line and pen, and penalize people if they figured it out, I would guess that what that would amount to is having to pay the ten percent early withdrawal, or the not the the ten percent penalty that you have to pay if you use five twenty nine money for something other than a qualified education expense. Right. I guess what, what, you know, that may not be a huge penalty. It's just hard to know, but uh, it definitely makes sense to consult your tax advisor, your financial planner, whoever you get advice from. Um, and there was some, you know, you, I think you did some research and found an interesting article in Journal of Accountancy in July about some of this. But yeah, it's very much open to interpretation, like so many things about Secure Act at this point. It is. And that's, that's where, you know, being prudent and careful is important because you don't want to end up coming back in the IRS saying, well, you owe penalties and taxes and interest for doing this. So that's Arch pretty, yeah, that's pretty punitive, but, but we just don't know. So that's why it's important to be. Prudent. So what, what requirements are, are placed on this from the standpoint of the beneficiary? I mean, I think you said the beneficiary has to have earned income, even though mm -hmm. the money would be coming from a 529 account. But what are some of the other limitations or requirements? So some of the other, that's a great, a great point. Some of the other limitations, they're, it's very similar to, if you think of it like the beneficiary's Roth IRA, the beneficiary of the 529, it's their Roth IRA. So like any other Roth IRA situation, you have to have earned income to contribute. You can't just contribute if you're not earning income. And, and that, that doesn't, you know, things like interest income, that doesn't count. It's got to be earned income. 
and the maximum is the lesser of the $6,500 maximum contribution or the earned income. So if they only earn $4,000 a year, you can't contribute the full $6,500. Right. You can only contribute $4,000. The other thing, if they decide to contribute to their Roth IRA and they contribute $4,000, you can only roll over $2,500 because they're subject to the, the max of $6,500 total. So that it doesn't, the 529 roller, d rollover doesn't have its own maximum, right? It's combined with the beneficiary's maximum contribution. And how about the, the income cap requirement? So if you have, if, if the beneficiary is a high wage earner, uh, ordinarily they may not be able to make their own Roth IRA contribution. Yeah, this is a great opportunity here. So Benefit, so someone who is a high wage earner may be precluded from contributing to an IRA at all, right? They just are ineligible because they make too much money. That doesn't apply to this 529 rollover. So you can contribute from the 529, roll it into the Roth IRA, even if they make $5 million a year. There's no limit. It's, it's a very, uh, it's a nice opportunity. I know a lot of people look for opportunities to get money into a Roth IRA when they can't directly contribute it. This is one way to do that. Okay, good. Um, well, it looks like we're about to run out of time here. Yeah, there's one other really quick, okay. and it's that there is a five year look back where you can't roll over funds that have been contributed or the earnings of those contributions within five years. So if it's older than five years, it's up for grabs. If it's more recent, it's not. So, so there are a lot of rules. And so in summary, this is an amazing opportunity to answer that question. What do I do with my unused 529 funds? Yep. Maybe roll it into a Roth IRA, but work with someone who can right. help you navigate it's these It's like rules. job security. It's a really cool thing, but it's job security for guys like us, right? Because right. it is complicated and we thank the Congress for making it so. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah. So be careful, um, but, but look out for this opportunity for yourself. Uh, anyway, that's all for today. So um, remember to like, subscribe, share with your friends and family, and leave us a comment with a question or just say hi. Um, and we'll see you next time. You've been watching Last Paycheck, weekly wisdom to help you retire and stay that way. If you like this show, be sure to hit like and subscribe. Last Paycheck is available anywhere you get your podcasts.